Today is Tuesday, October 15th, 2013. One ounce of silver is $22. One Bitcoin is $135. Peace News Now is brought to you by Bitcoin and silver from friends of WeUseCoins.com and SonsOfLibertyMint.com. Get fine silver quarters from the Sons of Liberty Mint. That's Sons with a U. These square silver pieces are the most divisible, usable silver on the planet. Order some today. That's Sons with a U. SonsOfLibertyMint.com SeaCoastOnline.com reports that a man has been trying for more than three years to get New Hampshire license plates that say Cops Lie. David Montenegro has been given the thumbs down by multiple departments of motor vehicles employees, then by state officials, and then after that, a superior court judge. Now, with the state's branch of the American Civil Liberties Union on his side, David is taking his fight for Cops Lie license plates all the way to the state Supreme Court. On November 7th, the state's highest court will hear oral arguments. The NHCLU filed an amicus brief arguing that the state and federal constitutions protect free speech, including messages on license plates. According to the state, cops lie is illegal to stamp on a license plate because, quote, it is offensive to good taste. Tellingly, they did approve his second choice, great government. Share your thoughts on the Peace News Now Facebook page. Outside Valley Forge National Historic Park this week, hundreds of veterans and other protesters marched around barricades and stop signs, demanding Congress reopen the monuments and parks. Meanwhile, in Washington, D.C., veterans clashed with police outside the White House, as PNN reported yesterday. The vets removed the barriers to the D.C. monuments, but were eventually stopped when riot police threatened that if the vets continue, quote, things will get ugly. Tourists and locals expressed delight at the actions of the veterans, but within 24 hours, the Obama administration rebarricaded the monuments. Speaking of the so-called government shutdown, it was revealed in a video going viral this week that Congress played a sneaky trick to avert the rule of law. In the video, Congressman Chris Van Hollen is on the House floor asking for clarification on the the rules of the shutdown. Just before the shutdown happened, Congress quietly passed a measure that said only House Majority Leader Eric Cantor can call for the shutdown to end. Is it reasonable for one man to have that kind of power? While the federal government has shut down some of its functions over the stalemate in Congress, some other federal agencies continue to operate unaffected. The U.S. military base in Guantanamo Bay, Cuba, for instance, is still in operation, where Dozens of men cleared for release continue to languish behind bars. A recently published animation by The Guardian UK depicts the suffering of detainees who have been on hunger strike for months. The short film reminds viewers that the practices of the offshore torture camp violate human rights and can no longer be ignored by the international community. Two years ago yesterday, on October 14th, 2011, a remotely piloted aircraft operated by the United States launched a missile at a restaurant in Aden, Yemen, killing, among several other nearby civilians, an American citizen named Abdul Rahman al-Awalaki, who was born in Denver to Yemeni-born parents and later moved with them back to Yemen. He was 16 years old. Al-Awalaki is one of four other American citizens killed by American drones. This story brought to you by friends of blockchain.info. Download the free Bitcoin wallet at blockchain.info. You've heard of Tom's Shoes. You buy a pair and they give one to charity. But does the buy one, give one model actually alleviate poverty? Critics wonder if Tom's is displacing local shoe producers by bringing in their shoes from elsewhere. Tom's is listening to those critics and announced plans to begin manufacturing some of its shoes in Haiti starting in a couple months. Tom's plans to employ a hundred Haitians and build a responsible, sustainable shoe industry in Haiti. Unlike food food subsidy programs which create dependence on handouts and destroy local farm economies, giving communities access to markets will do much more to lift individuals out of poverty and help them improve their own lives. Peace News Now is on the next news network and is brought to you by friends of WeUseCoins.com and SonsOfLibertyMint.com. Share this episode with your friends, and if you enjoyed it, send some Bitcoin to Donate.PeaceNewsNow.com. I'm Derek J. reminding you that peace is the way.